I'd like to do another example of using space-time diagrams to calculate a uh, to calculate results in relativity in special relativity without needing to use any equations. This is not a video where I'm going to explain the diagrams from the ground up. I've already done one of those, but I want to just very quickly show you how you can do one of these calculations using the special hyperbola graph paper very quickly and easily. So just as a reminder, uh, I'm using the special hyperbola graph paper which was uh, designed, come up with, by my colleague Tom Moore at Pomona College for his Six Ideas That Shaped Physics textbooks. And you can download that paper from examples of that paper or a program to generate it from his website for those books. But right now, what I want to do is just do a quick example of this, another example different from the ones I've done before. So in particular, I'm going to once again have Alice be my uh, stay-at-home uh, watcher of all things. Alice is sitting still in this reference frame and passes through the origin. She lives at x equals zero and is just sitting still. So her path through space and time is a straight vertical line going up along this graph. Her friend Carol, on the other hand, is moving quite quickly, though not as quickly as Bob. Uh, fair warning, I'm using the same graph paper that I used for Bob going four-fifths the speed of light earlier. That's because it takes forever to make this blasted paper uh, to blow it up this big. So I don't want to, I've got to reuse this thing. So ignore the four-fifths C line here. That's from my previous example. We can compare. It's useful to compare the different speeds right here. So, okay, Carol is moving at one-tenth light year per year. And if I want to show her path on here, I'd better just find where she's going. Carol also is going to depart from the same departure event at the origin. That's how we're defining the origin. Using this hyperbola graph paper, you always want to have one of your, the, the beginning of your event be at the origin or else the paper doesn't work. So she's moving at one tenth light years per year. That means after, you know, to get one light year, she has to spend 10 years doing it. So I'm going to do a little dot here and uh, we'll just draw a line to show her path on here from her departure on up. So let's see how accurately I can do this. Crossing my fingers here. Always, the challenge here is when you're doing this, the quality of your drawing actually matters because we're going to be reading numbers and results right off of the paper. Okay, so that is my path for Carol. I'll go ahead and label it that it is one tenth times the speed of light. And again, notice what we have going on here. Notice that Carol here is moving much slower than the speed of light, so her path is closer to vertical than that 4 fifth C path was over there. Her path is pretty close to vertical. There's Carol's path. Now, the first question I asked here is, as seen by Alice, at what time does Carol reach a distance of 1.5 light years from where she started? Well, I can go up here 1.5 light years, Looks like it's going to be right here, 1.5, trace it up. Where do I get halfway? By no coincidence at all, 1.5 light years takes 15 years. So the time it takes, as seen by Alice, is 15 years. Again, that's an easy calculation. But now let's do the interesting one. Let's ask how much time passed for Carol along the way. Again, we use the fact that the hyperbolas drawn onto this paper are lines of constant space-time interval, and the fact that Carol doesn't think that doesn't doesn't think that she's moving in, in her own reference frame, and so we know that delta x as measured by Carol is zero, and that means that delta t as measured by Carol is the same as the space-time interval. So all I have to do is read the space-time interval off of this graph. Space-time interval of what? Well, of the moment where, uh, of the event where Carol reaches 15, uh, 1.5x right here. That is the event I care about. So let's see what we've got. Let's see where this takes us. If I look at it carefully, it looks to me it's between 14 and 15. It's between the 15 hyperbola and the 14 hyperbola. And if I try to eyeball it, let's see, a half... There's a half, just sort of going on a straight line between the two, 
That's halfway between three quarters. I might say 14.85 or 14.8, 14.9. 14.8 to 14.9 years. Somewhere in that range is what I'd say. It's clearly less than 15 years, but it's definitely more than 14 and three quarters. So 0 0.8, 0 0.9, something like that. So I've read that off directly from here. I'll say, when I do the calculation explicitly, if I do an exact calculation using this equation to do that, I get delta T is measured by Carol of, I wrote this down somewhere, 14.925 years. So eyeballing it has come out really close to the right answer. It's not perfect, you can tell, but it comes out well. This is how space-time diagrams work and how you can do a quick calculation uh, uh, in space-time diagrams without actually having to do any math. You just read it right off the hyperbola and you're all set. I like this way of doing relativity. It gives you some real sort of visual insight into how relativistic problems work.